Hello guys and welcome to another calculus video. Today we're going to be tackling this amazing infinite sum. Uh, you may notice it looks really really similar to another infinite sum that I evaluated recently. The only difference here is this 2 right here and uh, the index right here is also shifted. And um, so I'm actually going to be doing two infinite sums in this video. This is the uh, much cooler, more difficult one, but we'll also do the, uh, the easier one. So uh, we're going to discuss why this sum is so much harder to uh, evaluate when you just add a, a simple 2 right here. You think it just kind of shifted over, but it actually makes it a lot more difficult, and you'll see why. So without any further ado, let's jump right into the summation. So as I said, the first sum we're going to do is a little bit easier. Uh, it's also just another variation of a sum that we did in a previous video with just that 2 added in right here. So we're going to be evaluating this sum. And we're going to use the same strategy that we've used in the past, which is converting the zeta function into its, uh, 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 its normal representation. Or yeah, it would be uh, k equals 1, uh, 1 over k to the 2n. However, uh, since we are subtracting that 1 at the beginning, we're, sum we're actually going to be summing from k equals uh, 2 because uh, we're just subtracting out that first term. And of course, we're still multiplying by 1 over n. Then we're going to go ahead and exchange the order of summation because these are all positive numbers. And then I'm just going to reorganize this as 1 over k squared all to the n. And then we're going to recall that a negative ln 1 minus x is equal to the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of x to the n over n, which is easily provable just by integrating the geometric series. And so let's apply that to this inner integral, and we can see that this is just going to be sum from k equals 2 to infinity of um, negative ln 1 minus 1 over k squared. So let's go ahead and reorganize uh, this on the inside. We're going to just put this all over k squared. So we're going to end up with k squared minus 1 over k squared. And then let's go ahead and split this up into two separate um, sets here. So on the top, we have k squared minus 1. So we're going to reorganize that into the k plus 1 minus k minus 1, or plus k minus 1. So we're going to have ln k plus 1 plus ln k minus 1, and then minus 2 ln k. And that's just because uh, n minus ln, uh, uh, ln k squared is just 2 ln k. And then what we're going to do is we're going to reorganize this so that we can create a bunch of telescoping sums. So we're going to make this ln k plus 1 minus ln k, and then plus ln k minus 1 minus ln k. Now we're going to sort of split this into two different sums here. And so if we look at the partial, the nth partial sum of this series, just writing out the first few terms, we can see that this is clearly going to be telescoping. So we're going to have like ln 3 minus ln 2, then ln 4 minus ln 5, or sorry, ln 4 minus ln 3 and so on and so forth. And so all of those are going to end up canceling. I'm just, I'll just write out the first few terms, minus ln2 plus ln4 minus ln3 plus ln5 minus ln4. And so I can just go ahead and cross out all these bits that cancel, and this ln5 is going to keep on canceling, right? So overall, we're going to have minus ln2. And for the last term, we're always going to have this leftover one, so we can just write plus ln n, and this is in all in the limit as n goes to infinity, right? I'll just uh, leave that there for now, and then if we go ahead and look at this other sum, it's going to be exactly the same story. It's just uh, kind of shifted over by one, so we're going to have um, ln one minus, or sorry, ln one minus ln two plus ln2 minus ln3, cross, 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 and it's going to keep on canceling, and overall we're going to end up with, uh, we're going to end up with just minus ln n, and the limit as n goes to infinity, right? And actually, technically, this one would be uh, n plus 1. However, um, as you go to infinity, the difference between ln n and n plus 1 is just going to cancel, 
So we can just go ahead and cross that out, right? And so overall, we're going to end up with uh, minus ln2, but so because of this minus sign in the front here, it's just going to end up being positive ln2, and that's actually the result of our sum. Um, and so yeah, so as you can see, we could pretty much use the same exact method we used last time to evaluate this integral. It was just a little bit more difficult because we had that k squared minus 1 over k squared rather than k minus 1 over k. So we had to expand it out a little bit more and make use of some uh, telescoping series. That's going to be a whole different story for the next series that we're going to evaluate. So now let's take on the real big one. Now before we start, I want to talk about an identity that we're going to be using in this video. Uh, I'm not going to be able to prove it here because it, the proof is just, I mean, crazy and long and complicated, and I'm, I can make two whole videos on that one probably. But it's going to be using the sine product formula. So for sine of pi z, where z can be complex, sine can be represented as an infinite product. It's equal to pi z times the product from uh, n equals 1 to infinity of 1 minus z squared over n squared. And you can see how this could sort of relate to our infinite sum that we saw last time, but we're going to end up with something a little bit different this time. We can uh, just start working on our problem right here. So we're going to have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n zeta 2n all over n. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is convert it into our other form, as we said before, n equals 1 to infinity. Now in this case, we're going to have k equals 1, not k equals 2, because we're not uh, doing that little subtract 1 that we had before. We don't have that here, so we don't have to worry about that. And we're just going to uh, integrate, or we're going to sum from k equals 1 to infinity. So that's a little bit different in this case. And so that's just going to be negative 1 to the n over n k to the 2n. And we're going to flip the order of uh, summation here. And so we're going to have the sum from k equals 1 to the to infinity of the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of. Now I'm going to combine this and this right here. So I'm going to have negative 1 over k squared all to the n power all over n. All right. So in order to evaluate this sum, it's uh, exactly the same thing we did last time. We're just going to end up negative ln 1 minus uh, what's inside the raised to the power to the n. So we're going to end up with, uh, I'll just bring the negative sign outside, sum from k equals 1 to infinity of ln. And instead of 1 minus 1 over k squared, we're going to have 1 plus 1 over k squared. And that's because of this negative sign right here. All right. Now this sum, the first thing I tried to do when, when I evaluated this sum was to um, do the same thing that I did last time and just make this k squared plus 1 all over k squared, right? And then I ended up with sum of ln k squared plus 1 minus 2 ln k. The trouble is I can't do what I did last time and make this a telescoping series because this actually factors into k plus i and k minus i. So that doesn't actually work out for us. So we have to figure out another method to evaluate this. So I'm going to go ahead and make some more space. Okay. So I'm going to use one of the most powerful tricks that anyone has for um, or the most powerful tricks that you can do when you see this natural log in your infinite sum. And so the great thing about the natural log and when it's included in an infinite sum is the natural log is just a really cool function because it can actually um, combine the inputs of multiple natural logs. And so what I mean by that is if we were to write out write this out as a partial sum, we would see that this is equal to ln 1 plus 1 over 1 squared plus ln 1 plus 1 over 2 squared plus ln 1 plus 1 over 3 squared. But because of the properties of natural logs, we can also write this all as ln 1 plus 1 over 1 squared times 1 plus 1 over 2 squared, and so on and so forth, right? So we can actually write this as the natural log of an infinite product. So I'm going to rewrite this as natural log of the infinite product, using pi notation here, of the product from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 plus 1 over k squared. 
now we're going to go ahead and try and use that sine infinite product uh, uh, representation that I just had. So as a reminder, I'm going to just clear up all this. So this is the representation for sine. You notice here that we have a minus sign here and then we have this z squared, but this n squared does match with this k squared right here. So we want to make this minus sign a plus sign. So we can actually rewrite this as 1 minus i squared over k squared. right? And since i squared is negative 1, we'll just end up with the same thing that we had before. So the next step is we replace i everywhere here in this formula. And now we're just solving for this product right here. This is going to be pi i, right? Uh, sine of pi i. And the great thing about sine of pi i is we can just rewrite this as i sine and then just put an h here to represent the hyperbolic sign. And the nice thing is these cancel out perfectly. And this product, which is what we're looking for, is just equal to sine h of pi over pi. Oh, um, also one thing I want to note is we uh, had a negative sign right here and a negative sign right here just from the last page that I forgot to copy over. So overall, if we go ahead and substitute this in, we're going to get negative natural log of sine h of pi over pi. Since this negative sign is nasty, we'll just bring it in as a power and we could just write this as natural log of pi over sine h pi or natural log of pi cosec right of pi so overall that is a pretty beautiful result and as you can see the thing that made this uh, sum so much di more difficult than the version where uh, instead of 2n we had n is because we have to deal with all these squares so as you can imagine, we could also replace this with something like 3n, and then we could end up with some uh, weird nasty factorization that we would have to deal with. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I absolutely loved this video. It was uh, really fun for me, and I really uh, find this result quite beautiful, and I absolutely was not expecting to, um, to be able to figure out this problem in such a nice way. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.